Hey guys, it's Alexander the Gamer here, and me and Alexander of Russia are here to uh, bring you some gameplay. So I uh, took a few minutes of a break, just organized a couple things, got a couple things ready, and uh, charged my phone a little bit, because that's what I used to maintain the time. It was running a little low. Um, my military building, this is done. The drill school here will get me some good stuff. It will unlock me Russian lifeguard Cossacks, which are a little bit better than regular Cossacks. Actually, significantly better, because it's better than Ulans. They'll give me lifeguard Hussars, Dragoons, mounted rifles. Actually, they have less charge bonus. Everything else is better. Uh, what else does it give me? It gives me these Grenadiers. Doesn't give me much, actually. Increases recruitment capacity. Which is good. Um. We'll want to keep an even number of infantry units. Currently we have 14. So we're just going to separate up our army, considering France is not going to march into the middle of Russia. Well, not at least until it defeats Austria, so. Should be fine for now. Okay, now that we've broken our army up, elites, skirmishers, general, cavalry, artillery, infantry. We'll want to maintain equal numbers. Right? So we currently have six. 14 infantrymen. Uh, so I said 3. 3 uh, regiments to a division. Uh, 3 divisions, and there's. What am I saying? Um, yeah, 3 regiments to a division, 3 divisions to an army. Two brigades to a regiment. So we want six regiments. No, we want nine. Two is eighteen, so we want eighteen, so it's four more line infantry. Perfect amount of recruitment slots. Great estates improve wealth by a fair bit, but they reduce happiness, so we won't be getting those yet. Uh, Equitarian Estates. Sure, we'll get those. Um... Yeah. Our income's up to 6,400, which is pretty decent, considering where it came from, so... Destroying the Ottomans will give us an economic boost, also give us the ability to securely get some coffee, or furs, which we can then trade for a good price. The only other people that will really be trading them will be Britain, so that's good. Uh, building constructed here. We got some more infantry. So it should be our infantry component done. Eighteen. Eighteen divided by two is nine. Nine divided by three is three. Three divisions of infantry. Uh, we'll have one support division added on, which what one support division is the red ones of six. Units we have four. Right. Let me let me just make sure I'm doing this right. So 
two brigades. Uh, one regiment. Then what? Three regiments equals a division. Four regiments equal a division. I currently have three divisions in here. So yeah. Three regiments equals one division. Then what? Four divisions. Will be a core. Four divisions is 24. So. One. So a little over. One and a half core. Equals an army. Right. So three regiments is six supporting units. Six. So we currently have seven. So uh, eighteen. Is our infantry. Question is, do we want to expand our cannon battery? Perhaps by one cannon? No, we can only recruit six pounders, so we'll just take a six pounder foot, put it in here, and deploy that as our field artillery army. Deploying six gun six batteries. Is our cavalry complete? There's extra room, I'll add another cav unit. Two Jaegers, extra. I'm thinking. We have four guard, one gen, five cav, five skur. Cap. It's 10, 28, 38, 39. Right? 18 plus 6 is 24, plus 4 is 28, 29, plus 5 is 34, plus 5 is 39. So we can have another unit. Now the question is, we take another... Well... I have an understrength guard division. Because I can't recruit other guard troops right now. Twelve pounder art foot artillery. This is what you really want. Twelve pounders. It's what you want. What you really, really want. Heck a lot more firepower. And, uh, more range. Less accuracy, though, but... Also less reloading skill, less morale, higher upkeep, etc. and so forth, but whatever. We have one extra unit. Do we take it in cavalry, skirmishers, or artillery? Um, I don't know, a good cavalry corps sounds good right now. Take an extra Cossack. Cap cavalry. Artillery. Guards. Infantry. Next turn, two more skirmishers. I'll also bring up two musketeers. Just to fill in ranks. Yeah, that's pretty good. Folks. Uh, 
Now let's see if there's any other... Oh no, I completely forgot about this port here. Uh, trading port. Get some trading ships now. Six cavalry. Once we have our army formed up, we'll move it to Odessa. And, uh, go from there. More buildings constructed. More recruitment. Income is way down. Surprisingly enough. Okay, you'll head down this way. Okay. Basic upgrades right now. That's what we're looking for. I don't think we have... Yeah, we have one more. Minsk here. No, we have one... We have a couple more after that still. Okay. So we still have hope for our economy still. It seems that they have decided to completely abandon... Moldavia to us, which is perfectly fine. It's a fairly worthless province. But I mean, whatever. Very poor. But it's more because of their mistreatment of the land than because of it actually being poor. Okay. Time to find those couple of built of places that have uh, tax assessors, not magistrates. There we go. Grand Opera House. Tax rate in the region. Cool. I'm going to start getting some economic ideas. That'll be good. All right now we need military to defeat the Ottomans. Next turn we will uh, name our army up. Still offering a thousand for a trade agreement. Still uh, refusing because I want to take your land. Friend, don't worry. It's not you, it's because you're fairly wealthy land and poorly defended. Of course, this is the case. Okay, whatever. Not the 16th Regiment of Foot. Crazy. I should probably start with the uh, first unit. Up here. Brigade. A foot. Enter. Um. This is pretty boring, so while I'm doing this, I'm gonna... Let's see, let's talk about something. So, let's... Uh, did I spell it? Let's talk about what's going on in this time period. 
uh, in this time period, uh, the French Revolution just happened. Uh, the French Revolution was pretty much, it was very, uh, very um, free and uh, liberalistic uh, revolution and opposed the king. I can't remember his name. I'm pretty sure it was like King Louis or something. Um, and his place rose Napoleon. If I remember correctly, Napoleon was not supposed to be the original emperor of the Republic of France. Surprise, surprise. But, um, he served as a foot soldier in the French, in the Kingdom of France's army. Uh, and when the revolution happened, he joined the revolution, and he distinguished himself, and, uh, moved up the ranks, which was much more capable in the revolution army, and later on in the French Emp uh, Republic, than in most other countries. The time. Uh... Uh, distinguishing himself, becoming a general. He then, after the war, well, actually, the person that was supposed to be put in charge, if I'm not mistaken, died. If I'm not mistaken, I might be completely wrong, but I don't think I am. I'm pretty sure he died, and in his place rose Napoleon. Uh, and Napoleon here uh, won the war, and uh, very soon after, after re-establishing all the new republic things, uh, he did what all strong nations do, and uh, France is definitely a very strong nation. He took his army of veteran revolutionaries uh, and he invaded Italy freeing the Italian states from Austrian rule and bringing them to the French cause, aiming to strike at Vienna, the capital of Austria, to uh, disable Austria for a major land invasion. Uh, after that, he did just that, he invaded Austria. And, uh, secured land. After defeating Austria and the reinforcing Russian army, uh, Napoleon married the daughter to the emperor, bringing Austria as a vassal. Uh, at this point, the alliance had been Russia, Austria, and Britain and Sweden against France, but that had failed. Now it was just Britain and Russia. Uh, Russia would have to fight through all of Austria to fight France, and Russia had just lost a major defeat. A couple at the hands of Napoleon. Uh, so they weren't too uh, interested in fighting anymore. So, what does any other power hungry man do <laughs> when they have had a taste of success after Italy and yeah I didn't tell you about Egypt but he also invaded Egypt uh, worked fairly well but he eventually had to retire after he failed to defeat the Ottomans in, uh, well, the Levant. 
because he had no big guns. So he's unable to take the Austrian great uh, Austrian Ottoman great forts out, so he failed. Uh, after that, after this war against Austria, he marched into Spain to destroy, on the pretense to destroy Portugal, an ally to England. Instead, he uh, dethroned or usurped the king of Spain and replaced it with his cousin. Uh, this sparked a war against the Spanish people, them not wanting to give up their king, and well, not liking Napoleon because of that. Now, this is a kind of an interesting time. Uh, Napoleon is at war with Spain. Technically not, but mm, most people didn't want this. So, he's pretty much at war with Spain. He's also at war with Portugal and Great Britain. So what happens is Great Britain decides to land an expeditionary force to try and help their allies uh, in Spain and Portugal out. So they uh, uh, land an expeditionary force under, I don't remember the guy's name, uh, But he failed. He was chased off. He landed in oh southern Spain, and uh, marched north, expecting to easily swat away those pesky Frenchmen. But uh, Napoleon wasn't here at the time, so under the command of, I'm pretty sure it was like Sult or something who was in charge of the Fra Spanish campaign sent the, or Marshal Sult Marshal Sult uh, detached Marshal uh, Ney south to defeat with a French army to defeat the Englishmen and he did that the English general caught sight of the French army, having heard reports that this was only a portion of the forces, and the part of the is not being affected because Ney is awesome at defeating people. Uh, Ney is an awesome person, and I like him. I don't like how he uh, tra treated the Spanish people, but that is one unfortunate thing. He had a very unfortunate life. I could like bring a whole episode about him, but... I'm not. Uh, so he ran fighting a war of withdrawal. Like, the French pretty much stopped chasing them, and they just kind of slow marched uh, after them with their infantry and cannons, and just collected supplies and gold and valuables and men from Spain. Not all Spanish people wanted to fight the Frenchmen, but uh, many did, and uh, well, or not fight the Frenchmen, but wanted to expel the Frenchmen. Some liked their ideas and stuff and wanted the French there, so they uh, formed uh, units under, Spanish units under France's command. It's quite interesting. Uh, but yes, they were marching after the English army. Quite fun, quite fun. And, uh, they pretty much just sent their dragoons and some squadrons of hussars. And when I say their dragoons, I mean, like, pretty much all their dragoons. And their, uh, and some hussars and lanciers. 
such like that up after the English and the English actually took significant losses uh, one particular hefty loss was the uh, very unfortunate loss well pretty much the complete destruction of um uh da -da 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 -da, what are they called not the I want to say the green jackets but that's not the proper term for them but the English had a special unit it was like the I believe it was the 42nd rifles the green jackets the first force to fight with the Baker rifle and uh they fought a lot of rearguard action, and they did a fair amount of damage to the enemy's cavalry, but these were, um, they were fairly disciplined, but they hadn't been disciplined to the point that most British soldiers were at this point. And, uh, well, mostly for that reason, on a couple occasions they had their square formation broken and if you don't know what square formation is it's pretty much just a big square with a bunch of pointy musket spikes pointing outwards to shoot and stab the enemy horses uh, they pretty much had these squares broken the French would like deploy their dragoons which are um, pretty much mounted light infantry they would ride up and then split into like a U shape right and then this wing would come up here, and this wing would come up here, and then the center would ride up this mount and shoot into the face of the square, forcing the square to contract and fire back. But they'd be taking atrocious losses, because any shots that missed the front line could slam into the back line, causing lots of damage. So they'd be forced to, like, form line or suffer those casualties. And if they just decide to suffer the casualties, well, they'd eventually get bored, mount up, and then they'd just charge the square. Uh, these dragoons, being very veteran, tended to fare well against the square, against these more inexperienced green coats, green jackets, uh, breaking squares and such, or if they formed line, being completely destroyed. So the regiment was pretty much completely wiped out at that point, which is unfortunate. And the British uh, rearguard suffered more because the light infantry, the riflemen could sit back and take pot shots and force all the cavalry to fight them, sparing many other re rearguard units. So they lost a lot of men, and this army got onto ships in the south of Spain. I'll kind of illustrate. They pretty much landed here, came up, came up, uh, Come up, came up to these fields, expecting to like, come over these little hills here on this road, and come or er, come across here, here and take Madrid back and give back the Spanish people. Come across this bridge to these farm fields, and a raid before them is the French army under Marshal Ney. They start backtracking along their journey back south. They're slowly taking losses, and this is approximately where the green jackets were destroyed. They continued taking more casualties here till they got to the ports here, got on British ships, and started sailing. Uh, when they were sailing past Lisbon, a boat jettisoned from the dock at Lisbon, came out to talk to them, and ordered them into port. Because the new general, Duke Arthur Wesley, or as more commonly known, the Duke of Wellington, had arrived at Lisbon with a small force of men. Mostly a couple of elite units from uh, Britain, the Coldstream Guards, the Grenadier Guards, the uh, KGL, the King's German Legion, both mounted and foot, the Black Watch, which was a Highlander unit, so the Scotsman, elite unit, the uh, 22nd Line, uh, and two other line units, and some various light artillery. The army arrived, and for the next like year, they massed up and defended Lisbon. Of course, this whole time, France was dealing with Spain, and when they were ready, they marched a vast army into Portugal, which all three times they attacked Arthur Wesley were defeated. First on a mountainside, which they launched two massive uh, columned attack, which would just be massive columns of men. 
thrown up against canister shot and musket volleys, and they almost won. They almost knocked them back. But the Portuguese were able to save the day. The next battle at... I don't remember where, but there was another battle. And the English had much poorer positions and withdrew behind the line of Tiv to Torvers, which was a massive line of forts across a river, and the French couldn't penetrate that. There's two battles after that in Portugal, before the Span French made it back to Spain, and then the British rammed them out of Spain, then attacked to the north, and uh, Waterloo, such on and so forth. That's the end of this episode. I'll see you guys next time. And Alexander the Gamer is officially out.